Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel and today we are checking out Blade Runner and I'm really excited for Blade Runner. I may have seen this movie before but I'm not 100% sure. I feel like I've seen clips from this movie for sure but I cannot recall for the life of me if I've seen this movie before. I have seen Blade Runner 2049 weirdly enough but I don't know if I've seen the first one which is why I'm watching it today. I love Ridley Scott as a director. I think he's a fantastic director. You can check out my reactions to Alien, to Thelma and Louise, and to maybe a few more Ridley Scott movies over here on the channel. And yeah, I'm really excited for this cyberpunky aesthetic, as well as Harrison Ford as the titular character, because I love Harrison Ford. I also know there's a lot of uh, different versions of this movie, to put it lightly. There's a theatrical version, there's a director's cut of this version, there's a final cut of this version. I'm sure there's maybe another version out there as well. So I had a really hard time figuring out which movie or which version of the movie I was going to watch today. Day. And after doing a little bit of research without any spoilers or anything like that, I came to the conclusion that I will be watching Blade Runner The Final Cut, which is a version of the movie that came out, I think, in around 2007. But yeah, I don't know. A few websites just said this is the best version of the movie to watch, so I'm watching this version. But I know that with each version comes a different take on the story, I'm pretty sure, or maybe a different ending, or things are added, things are removed. And so maybe I'm hoping, I'm hoping this one will be the one that will be able to please the most people because I know there will be things in the other versions that people will like more or less than the one I'm watching today. And before we get into this reaction, let me do the lighting. So let me turn light and said what color it should be. Boop. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so the lighting today, I'm gonna go blue just because I feel like this is gonna be a very good blue light movie with a lot of rain, with a lot of darkness and shadows and neon and stuff like that. So I think blue is gonna be a great choice of color today. And if you'd like to check out more of my reactions, you can head over to my Patreon of Uncut and Early Access reactions to my movies and TV shows that come out up to three weeks early as well as exclusive live streams, Patreon merch, movie polls, and so much more. You can also join Patreon for free and keep up to date with what I am posting. Anyways, thank you so much if you check it out. Let's get back to the video. Okay, I'm wearing my Star Trek shirt because this is a sci-fi movie and this is a sci-fi shirt. And if you want to check out my Star Trek reactions, you can head over to my Star Trek reactions. I have, I'm going through all of DS9 at the moment. I've also watched the original series and stuff. But anyways, that's besides the point. Let's get into this movie. I hope you enjoy my reaction to Blade Runner. Should I say Blade Runner, the final cut, so you guys are more specific? Blade Runner, the final cut. Jesus, that was kind of a jump scare. Vangelis, what a sick name for someone composing music. Directed by Ridley Scott, let's go! This was in Ridley Scott's epic phase of his career. A being virtually identical to a human known as a replicant. Special Police Squad's Blade Runner units, that's a sick name. This was not called execution, it was called retirement. Wow, 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 and replicants are sentient life forms I feel, right? So, wow, this is interesting. Dude, 2019, we're already past the future of Blade Runner. Is this really what Ridley Scott thought 2019 would look like? I'm ashamed. Wow, this is so beautiful and the soundscape is incredible. That's gorgeous. I feel like I'm meditating and lifting off into the heavens right now from this music. That's a beautiful shot. Care if I talk? So do replicants look exactly like human beings? It's not fancy or anything. You're in a desert, walking along in the sand when all of a sudden- Is this the test now? Yes. <laughs> but how come I'd be there? Maybe you're fed up. Maybe you want to be by yourself. Who knows? This guy's trying to write his own backstory for this desert. But I understand what you mean. You reach down, you flip the tortoise over on its back, Leon. You make up these- Listen to the music. But you're help. But you're not helping. What do you mean, I'm not helping? I mean, you're not helping. This is so intense. About your mother? Your mother? Let me tell you about my mother. Oh my god! Oh my god, I was expecting him to be shot, the guy with the gun, not the interrogator to get shot. and adventure. This is already one of the most beautiful movies I've ever seen in my entire life. 
Love that even the umbrellas have lights on them. That is awesome. We need that. Oh, hi, Harrison. He's saying you're under arrest, Mr. What? Why? Mr. Decker. Ah, uh, even the police cars look so cool. I could just watch the wides of this movie forever. I love the corporate cyberpunkness of this movie, you know what I mean? Like, that's definitely something that Ridley Scott and company got right, is how much corporateness and advertisements, or, or how many, I guess, not how much, how many of them are gonna be in our life. No, sir, not embarrassing, because no one's ever gonna find out they're down here. But you're gonna spot them and you're gonna air them out. How do you spot a replicant? You know the score, pal? You're not cops, you're little people. Oh, origami, that's so nice. No choice, pal. I've already had an IQ test this year. I don't think I never had one of them. So this guy is a replicant. I had Holden go over and run Voight comp tests on the new worker. Looks like he got himself one. Now you look down and you see a tortoise. Okay, okay, so they're good at hiding, and they killed a lot of people. On atomic loads all day and night. The only way you can hurt them is to kill them. Wow. What do they want out of the Tyrell Corporation? Well, you tell me, pal. Revenge, maybe? I don't know. Oh, I like the look of this guy. Talk about beauty and a beast. She's both. She was born 2016, which means she's only, what, like three years old? Aw. The designers reckon that after a few years, they might develop their own emotional responses. Really? So they built in a fail-safe device. Which is what? For your lifespan. So they only have a year left then. Dang it, these Coca-Cola ads always actually get me. I always want a Coke when I see them. That's marketing right there. Absolutely beautiful. I have chills. Every single time there's a wide, I have chills. The music as well. Wow, every- there's so many screenshotable shots. They're either a benefit or a hazard. If they're a benefit, it's not my problem. May I ask you a personal question? Sure. Have you ever retired a human by mistake? Oh, that's a good question. Capillary dilation of the so-called blush response. Fluctuation of the pupil. Involuntary dilation of the iris. Okay, genius, who are you? Indulge me. On you? Try her. It's too bright in here. You need to go somewhere dark. Oh, that's sick. Oh, that is so cool. Oh, and the st little streaks of lights that are left, that blue light. The lighting in this movie is phenomenal. The set, everything is phenomenal. And report the person who gave it to me to the police. You've got a little boy. He shows you his butterfly collection, plus the killing jar. These questions are so interesting. I take him to the doctor. The reflection in her eyes is sick looking. A nude photo of a girl. Is this testing whether I'm a replicant or a lesbian, Mr. Deckard? Just <laughs> fair enough, fair question. The guests are enjoying an appetizer of raw oysters. The entree consists of boiled dog. Boiled dog? Did she pass? I mean, she had to have passed, right? Because she's a human. Thank you. She's a replicant, isn't she? Oh! She is a replicant! How many questions? 20, 30 cross-reference. It took more than a hundred for Rachel, didn't it? She doesn't know. She doesn't know she's a replicant? To suspect, I think. Suspect? How can- Is that why her eyes look so cool? Because- is it because she's a replicant? We create a cushion or pillow for their emotions and consequently we can control them better. So she has a fake past. Is that part of the test? No. Stop putting this Coca-Cola sign in front of me. Please, I don't want to spend money on Coke, but I might have to. This is his house. What a drab looking bathroom. 
What is that? I love that this guy likes making origami. My brother really loves making origami, so that's kind of cool. It's a little nostalgic. Time. Oh. Enough. Oh, this guy. Let's go. Oh, they're together. Okay. Wow. Wow, the sets, guys. If this movie didn't win an Oscar for set design, for music, for lighting, for costumes, for cinematography, then the Oscars are rigged. I have to say, the Oscars are rigged. <laughs> blue lighting was a very good choice for my lighting, by the way. There's so much blue light everywhere. I love it. Calm down, calm down. Hey! Hey! Cold! What is it? Ugh. Why would you stick your hand in that blue goo? Insect dates. Don't know. I, I don't know such stuff. I just do eyes. I just do eyes. Questions. I don't know answers. Who does? Tyro. He, he knows everything. Okay, let's go find him. Big, big boss, big genius. He, he designed your mind, your brain. We're gonna actually meet Tyrell. That's pretty exciting. Not an easy man to see. Can be caught, I guess. I love how ice is starting to form very slowly. Jay, Jay, Sebastian. Ew, he's just putting eyeballs on him. Jay, Sebastian. Let's continue, shall we? That guy's so menacing. That Nexus replicant guy is so menacing. Oh my god, I love him. What are you doing there? She's just hiding in the walls. You want a drink? No. The lighting again, guys. Oh my god. It's like cyberpunk noir and corporate all in one movie. Look. It's me with my mother. Those are fake memories. Fake memories. Orange body, green legs. Watched her build a web all summer. Then one day there's a big egg in it. Wow, dude, my mind would be blown if someone knew this. Implants. Those aren't your memories. They're somebody else's. They're Tyrell's niece. Tyrell's niece. I made a bad joke. You're not a replicant. Go home. Okay? It's too late. You can't just say bad joke at this point. Dude, her world was just shattered. Oh, wow. So do all replicants, when they get their memories, when they get, like, implanted memories, they get photographs, like, fake photographs? that are like kind of those memories or about their past as well. Is that why the guy wanted to get the photographs from the room? You know what I mean? Is this another replicant? I love how grimy the city streets are as well. There's so much detail in every shot. He's on the oh my god. Don't worry, I won't hurt you. What's your name? Chris. Nice Chris. To I'm hungry, JF. I got stuff inside. You wanna come in? Oh wait, he's kind of nice. Don't you dare do anything to him. He seems so nice. Oh my god. Spilling up by yourself. Those mannequins are freaky. My friends are toys. I make them. It's a hobby. I'm a genetic designer. Oh, really? Home again, home again. Oh, Jeez. my God. Oh, my God. I was not expecting this. I love that everyone in this universe just doesn't have lights, you know what I mean? Like, everything is so dark and dusky. Like, turn on, turn on some lights, please. But I love the aesthetic, so I can't complain. 
The thing is, if the Tyrell Corporation can put memories... Hold on, there's a unicorn. And then I'll get back to my thought. It's a beautiful unicorn. That picture is very important. Why is that picture important? I was going to say, if the Tyrell Corporation can put memories into replicants and make them think that they're humans, I feel like that would make everyone question if they are replicants or humans. Like, you would never be certain if you're a human and if your memories are real at this point. That's a muscly guy right there in the corner. He was in another picture too, no? Pan right and pull back. Stop. What's he looking at? It's a door hole? Six. A mirror? Wait a minute. Go right. Stop. Oh! Track 45 left. Stop. Hold on! And the picture reveals itself. If only pictures could do this in real life. I like that on the hard copy though, it's still super blurry. It makes it a little bit more believable that you can zoom in that far in a photo. <laughs> Air Force like, bro, get your bird under control. Finest quality, superior workmanship. Oh, you have a number. Interesting. Not fish. Snake scale. Snake scale? I want to know how much budget went into this movie because, again, it's one of the most beautiful movies I've ever seen. Hello, little snake. Look, Dr. Huey says down in China oh, that was easy. He talks so fast. <laughs> Jason Voorhees dancing. Happy? I'd like to ask you a few questions. Why did you buy that snake? Oh, what's in that drink? There are like maggots in that drink or something. Taffy Lewis is on the line. Why don't you come on down here and have a drink? I don't think so, Mr. Deckard. That's not my kind of place. Go someplace else. No, you should come down. I think it's kind of funny that movies that predicted the future, they never predicted phones. Like, there's almost no movie that came out in the 70s and 80s and stuff where, where it's predicting the near to distant future. Where when people talk to each other, there's no phones. It's always like home phones or landlines and stuff like that. No mobile phones. Actually, uh, I'm from the uh, confidential committee. Uh, his acting, his voice. <laughs> or unsavory or otherwise uh, repulsive to, to your person. Huh? <laughs> She's naked. He's like, oh, what's on the roof? That's interesting. I may. For what? For, uh, for holes. Holes? Holes. Is it the same? Okay, I need that hair dryer in my house. I don't even have that much hair, but I need that hair dryer in my house. I would just stick my head in it all the time. It's so much fun. Oh. Oh, wow. Oh, her outfit's kind of cool. Our first kind of action sequence. How do you f even find- Oh, never mind. I was gonna say, how do you even find anyone in a world so full of people? He found her. Oh, there she is. Oh, okay. I thought she had disappeared. Oh my god, he actually shot. What a fun sounding gun. Oh my god, it sounds so powerful. Oh! Oh! Into the snow. 
think she's dead. Oh my god, there she is. Yeah, what do you want? Ciao. Hey, good to know Budweiser is still around in 2019. I didn't know that. <laughs> well, I keep thinking this is the future, but it's 2019. It's the past. It's the past for us. That drink you look almost as bad as skin jog left on the sidewalk. I'm going home. Good luck. Fair enough. Take a nice long bath. Didn't even know she was a replicant. Something to do with a brain implant, says Tyrell. Come on, gal. Drink some for me, up pal. So that woman is gone then. Like the woman who thought she was human, she's gone. Oh, well, she's gone, but she's right there. Every time I say someone's gone or missing, they just are there. You know what I mean? I just have bad timing. Leon, how old am I? Oh, one punch old. Oh, wow. Backhanded slap. Time to die. Oh, oh my god, oh my god. I was saying oh for the eye thing, but oh my god. Wow, she shot him in the head. I also loved the sound design there. The, there was no music, but there was that whistling that got louder and louder as the fight went on. See what I mean though? Like, turn on the lights in your house. Turn on the lights in your house. I'm not in the business. I am the business. I am the biz. What? Just blind me right there. Okay. What's she doing? Yeah. Oh my god, I love the eyes. They're a little uncanny. What if I go north? Disappear. Would you come after me? No. No, I wouldn't. I owe you one. Okay, that's good. That's good! You can be free. You can be a free replicant. If she goes north, does that mean she's coming to Canada? Canada. But somebody would. Oh, that's rough. So if you're a replicant, you're just never safe. No matter where you go, you always have to be watching your back. Deckard, you know those files on me? Maybe everyone in the future is scared the of light. The That's why there's no lights on. You know that Voight comp test of yours? Did you ever take that test yourself? I would take it to make sure I wasn't a replicant, I swear. <laughs> imagine if- IMAGINE! Imagine if Deckard is a replicant. I think I would probably do a backflip if he's a replicant or something. I'm like mesmerized at the moment. I love this saxophone background music. So smooth. Oh. Good try. Good try, Deckard. That was a really good shot. I can't explain why that was a good shot, but it was. You play beautifully. You did actually. You did. Is it a kissing moment? Oh, it is. Oh, she's like you can only kiss by cheek. That's it. What? Why? Does she want to kiss him and is just scared to do it, or does she not want to kiss him? Oh, okay, maybe she wanted to kiss him, but she was just really scared. I was just... Guys, look, I don't know, it's here on my screen. Look, it's a unicorn, flipping unicorn right there. That was in Harrison Ford's dream. I was also wondering about this guy. I was waiting for him to show up again. What you doing? I'm sorry, <laughs> just peeking. Oh. oh my God, the eyes. The eyes. Look better. Just better. So if the eyes look like that, then you're replicants. It must be. Hi, Roy. Oh, gosh, you really got some nice toys here. 
Yeah, freaky toys. Oh my god. Oh my god, I did not expect that. Okay. Okay. Because you're so different. You're so perfect. What generation are you? Oh, he knows. <laughs> Good job. Good job. <laughs> they didn't even hurt her. I've only beaten him once in chess. He's a genius. He plays Dr. Terrell? I feel for Sebastian in this situation. He seems like a kind of nice guy. I don't think there's another human being in the whole world who would have helped us. This building is so sexy. Oh, they're going. 66,000 Prosser and Anchor Pitch. Hmm. This guy's Tyrell? Aid at Entry. Did I miss that at the start of the movie? Nonsense. Just a moment. <laughs> Nonsense. I love how they're playing chess like this. Queen. As I told you, the night takes queen. Milk and cookies kept you away, huh? Let's discuss this. You better come up, Sebastian. Wow, really? I can't believe that worked. It's not an easy thing to meet your maker. And what can he do for you? And the maker repair what he makes. See, even Tyrell doesn't use lights. He uses candles for the aesthetic. For the aesthetic. What seems to be the problem? Death. Death. He wants to live. Father. <laughs> this guy's so good at his light deliveries. Potent mutagen it created a virus so lethal the Newly formed DNA strand carries a mutation, and you've got a virus again. Oh man, there's really no way. I've done questionable things. <laughs> also Maybe some questionable things, but yeah, probably extraordinary things too. Oh. Oh! Oh! Oh, 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 oh my God. Oh my God. That was intense and intimate and graphic and disturbing. Please don't do the same to Sebastian. Oh my God, the music is insane at the moment. Okay. Checked and cleared. Have a better one. Oh my god, the cars are so sick. I love the smoke that comes out of them. There's no way to treat a friend. What are you guys doing? Come on. That's an epic shot too. Look at that. That is so detective-y. Sci-fi detective-y. The spotlights are really cool. She turned her head and that scared me, I swear. We're about to get a cool fight here, I think. Maybe a chase, not a fight. I would be like, what the heck? No, that's such a- oh. She's right there. She's pretending to be a doll. That is so epic. Wow, this is so cool. Oh! Get absolutely- Oh my god! Oh my god! Get absolutely legged! Oh my god, he's getting thighed and slapped. Oh my god, and nose pulled. 
Oh, wow. The screams. Oh. That was terrifying. What the heck? That was very overwhelming. He knows something's up. He dove out of the way so fast. Was he a Power Ranger? Oh my god. Let me give you a hand. This is for Zora. Oh god. Oh god. I'm gonna give you a few seconds before I come. That's what she said. Oh, whoa. you know, I actually do feel a little bit bad for the this replicant guy and all the replicants, to be honest with you. Like, I wouldn't necessarily say they're villains. Four, five. How to stay alive? Do you have his shirt off? He just took his shirt off. Oh, he dropped his gun. That is not good. I can see you. That's weird. That's so creepy. Man, it's hardcore raining, isn't it? Oh. So interesting how they're both doing things with their hands. Oh my god. Better get it up. I'm gonna have to kill you. Oh my god, what a lie. You can't play, and if you don't play. <clears throat> if you can't play, then what? Finish your line. Oh. Good hit. Oh, good hit. He's like chasing his food a little bit, you know what I mean? Oh my god. Unsportsmanlike. <laughs> oh, he's so scary. I don't like not seeing him, you know what I mean? Because he's just gonna jump out of somewhere and be terrifying. Oh my god. See, I told you, he just pops out of nowhere. Wow, what a shot. My ears are also in heaven right now. Where did he get that? Where did he get that bird? Oh god, that's terrifying. Quite an experience to live in fear, isn't it? Oh, he just made his point in one sentence. Oh! He saved him. He wants to talk. I watched sea beams glitter in the dark near the ten hours of gate. Moments will be lost in time, like tears in rain. Like tears in rain, that's good. I just got chills all of a sudden, what the heck? Oh, did he actually just die? Oh. You've done a man's job, sir. I was mesmerized, I'm sorry. I was mesmerized. It's too bad she won't live. But then again, who does? What? Someone went into his apartment. Rachel? Please be Rachel. Maybe please don't be Rachel. Please be, please be sleeping. Please don't be dead. Oh my God, who sleeps like that, Rachel? You're weird. Oh. 
Origami. Wait, Origami. It's that police officer guy. It looks like a unicorn. Yeah, it looks like a unicorn. What? Uh, hold on, I need to think about that ending. Hold on, I need to think about that ending. I'll talk about the ending in the review, so give me give me like two minutes. But wow, what a movie. Wow, what an amazing, an amazing, amazing movie. Just the cinematography, outstanding. The music, outstanding. The lighting, the directing. Everything about it was outstanding. The world building. Oh wow, this movie was so good. And that was my rea- Sorry, let's, let's try that one again. And that was my reaction to Blade Runner 1980- Oh, it's not called 1982, but made in 1982 as a drama sci-fi starring Harrison Ford, Ru Rutger Hoyer, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that name, and Sean Young. So yeah, I watched- I mean, this movie came out in 1982, but I didn't watch the 1982 version of this movie. I actually watched Blade, as I said in my intro, I watched Blade Runner The Final Cut, which means I watched a version of the movie that was created in 2007, I believe. And so, my first question to you guys is, what is the difference between- I'm pretty sure there are three versions of this movie. What is the difference between these three versions? We have the theatrical cut that came out in 1982, too. We have the director's cut. Don't know when that came out, but I'm pretty sure there's a director's cut out there. And then I think the final version is Blade Runner, the final cut, which came out in 2007. And I just want to know what the differences are, what is in some of the movies, what is not in the other movies, and what your guys' preference is. If you've seen all three, what your preference is as to which Blade Runner you go back to if you rewatch the movie. I would be interested in that actually because it is always interesting watching different versions of the movie because every different version of the movie, the way it's cut, the way it's edited, the way that things are left in, things are left out, they will result in a different experience every time, even if it's the same plot. And so yeah, I find it really interesting that there are three versions of this movie and that there is a debate online about what movie is the preferred Blade Runner. Now that being said, the biggest debate in my head right now is what the heck is up with that unicorn, man? I don't understand, but at the same time, I'm trying to piece it together. It probably won't be any coherent thought about this unicorn, but please let me know what your interpretation of the unicorn is. But if there is, there might also be like an actual answer out there for what the unicorn represents, but in my mind, I am not quite sure. Maybe it means that Deckard is a replicant in a way because this is why I think maybe he could be a replicant because he dreams about the unicorn right at the, like halfway through the movie he dreams and all of a sudden there's like a random unicorn on your screen and you're like what the heck is going on there's just a random unicorn on my screen right and then nothing really happens with this unicorn thing and then all of a sudden that police guy who he works with he's like oh it's a shame you won't live long or something I don't know he says something along the lines of that he says I don't, I, don't, I don't know the exact line, but he says something like that, right? He screams it out to Deckard in the rain, and then he leaves, Deckard leaves his house later on, like five minutes later, and there's a unicorn origami on the floor. And who was making origami? That police officer, you know what I mean? And so maybe he knew about Deckard's memories and dreams because they're fake, they're implanted just like Rachel's, and that's why Deckard knew about Rachel's memories and stuff. I'm not quite sure. That's my interpretation of the unicorn. It could mean something completely different. It could symbolize that Deckard and Rachel are now free and are able to love each other in peace, you know what I mean? But I don't think it means that. I, I don't know. I want to believe that it means that Deckard is a replicant, but then at the same time, I don't know, that doesn't really make- Okay, because I said at the start of this reaction that I had seen Blade Runner 2049 before, and while that is true, I saw it when it came out in theaters, and that's it. So I've only seen it once, and it's been a really long time, so I don't really remember anything besides the fact that Harrison Ford 
is in the movie and then there's also like a random scene where ryan gosling is looking at this really big like hologram woman and i don't know why she does that and then there's also dave batista's in the movie i don't remember why he's in the movie or anything but he is but those are the three things i remember and one of those being harrison ford is in blade runner 2049 and so it's like if replicants can only live four years then how is harrison ford in blade runner 2049 which means which means that he can't be a replicant but maybe he finds a way to live longer or something like that i'm not quite sure so i feel like my theory is not correct that he's a replicant but it could be correct i'm not quite sure i need i need your guys's help please okay but besides all the speculation about the unicorn and about the different versions of the movie how did i think of Blade Runner, or how did I think? What did I think of Blade Runner? I keep wanting to say 1982, but just Blade Runner. I thought this movie was absolutely fantastic, phenomenal, amazing. It was one of the most beautiful movies I have ever seen in my entire life. And that's saying something because this movie was dingy and grimy and dirty and gross at, at parts in it. You know what I mean? Like it was such a gritty grimy downer i don't not down to earth per se but down to earth movie if you know what i mean like just so detailed with everything the cinematography was gorgeous the lighting was gorgeous the music was heavenly it i was literally i don't know if you if you watch my uncut reaction and you see me during the credits i was like floating in my chair you could probably not i was like, like my feet in camera my head was on the roof of my ceiling you know what i mean like it was just i was floating the music was so good and the music was great throughout this movie the acting was amazing so yeah let's get a little bit more into the music of what i liked and then we'll get into the cinematography and the lighting and that this movie should have won like i don't know if this movie won any oscars but this movie needed to win like five or six oscars at least for the sets and lighting alone okay so the music of this movie was as i said phenomenal it was heavenly it made me float it made me feel like i was not on earth it made me feel like i was in the future just flying around which is kind of funny because this movie is actually set in the past now it's weird watching older movies like this movies that came out in the 70s and, and in the 80s and stuff like that that are set in the future but now we are past that future you know kind of like back to the future to blade runner i'm sure there's a bunch of others that you can mention but interesting that this movie is set in 2019 now you know what i mean it's like whoa the past is so futuristic that's crazy but the music is just so synthy i love the wides the wides would always be accompanied by these long that's my interpretation of a synth sound you know what i mean just these synthy sounds it was so 80s but at the same time so beautiful there was like a sax i'm not saying 80s music is not beautiful i'm just saying like 80s is very synth but it's i feel like it's definitely more a little bit upbeat synth but this was like heavenly synth that's how i'm gonna put it psychedelic synth if you were like high on something and listening to the soundtrack i think you'd actually start to be like superman and just fly away that would be crazy but yeah the the saxophone love theme between Deckard and Rachel was phenomenal. It was so intimate and quiet, but then we had grandiose synth soundtracks that just blew your head out of the water. It overwhelmed you with sound. The music was phenomenal, and that's all I have to say about it. The cinematography as well was some of the best cinematography I have ever seen in my entire life. The way that shots were composed, this has to do a little bit with directing as well. The director's eye and the cinematographer's eye just coming hand in hand, so I have to give a big hand to the cinematographer whoever you are and Ridley Scott for where you're placing the camera and stuff like that but just the lighting in every scene and stuff like that was phenomenal the way that the light would go through blinds and create streaks across characters and highlight the replicants weird like eye thing where they kind of looked like you know that owl it was interesting they showed the owl and it had the same eye thing as a replicant so that was really cool but you know they had like those really reflective eyes and stuff like that which was interesting but Decker didn't have that which is why i feel like maybe he wasn't a replicant or maybe he was just never in a situation where that popped up i'm not quite sure but anyways there was a lot of blue light <clears throat> You know, a lot of use of shadows to really make things atmospheric and dark. No one turned on the lights in this movie at all. It was so weird. We're in the future in 2019, 2019 and there's so much neon everywhere, but it's like electricity just 
doesn't exist because even Tyrell, a man who is wealthy beyond belief, doesn't use lights. He uses flipping candles everywhere and it's just and there's it's always dark outside. It's always gloomy and rainy outside, but I just don't understand why people don't use lights. It's like lights are just banned from existence. Like you must have a very aesthetic home that's dark and grimy and noir and candle lit and if you do have a light, it's going to be a really bad neon light that emits no light whatsoever. I just find it I just found it funny that there was no light, but yeah, I just loved the cinematography and how real the world felt as well. Just how grimy, there was trash everywhere. There's so much detail in every single aspect of the sets from the buildings to the cars, to the characters and people walking around the sets full of life. You know what I mean? Wherever, whenever someone was on the ground, like Deckard, for example, there'd be people moving around him, people behind him, people in front of him, people talking sounds like a symphony of city sound, you know, very overwhelming at times when he's chasing, I forget what her name was, but when he's chasing that first girl, the snake girl, and she's like, there's like, there are moments like she's hiding in that, it looked like they were going into a subway or something, but she's hiding in this group of people and there's just so much sound, there's traffic, there's like a robotic voice talk, like the stop sign voice or whatever the crosswalk voice talking there's people talking you know what i mean there's ships flying in the sky it was just there was so much happening and it was so immersive and that's what the cinematography the directing the world building of this just made this world so realistic and immersive and it's some of the best world building and best cinematography that i feel like i've ever seen okay i think that is going to be the end of my review thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to these wonderful beautiful amazing people right here for supporting me and supporting my channel it really does mean a lot i think there's a lot more you can talk about in this movie there's a really cool concept of what is life and stuff like that the replicants being not antagonists like yes roy was very scary in this movie but he just wanted to live he had been kind of like a slave his whole life in a way you know what i mean and so there's like the replicants are not bad guys in this movie in a way you could even say that the tyrell corporation and human beings are the bad guys for making these life forms who are sentient and then just having them die in four years and hunting them down killing them off and they're, they're living their lives in fear their entire life so there's some really good it's not just like an action sci-fi or a detective sci-fi movie it's a little bit higher concept than that because there are a lot of themes of life and what is good and what is evil and stuff that are in this movie that I you could probably take an hour to explore and still only get through half of some of the messages as well the dove at the end for example what is that about where did he get that dove the unicorn what is that about please let me know is he a replicant is Flippin Deckard a replicant and should I watch Blade Runner 2049 I think I'm going to watch Blade Runner 2049 even though again I have seen it before but it was a long time ago in theaters I was young back then my memory from watching movies back then is very bad I only remember three things from it so I feel like I'm I am gonna watch Blade Runner 2049 again because it's a Denise Villeneuve movie who I love and also it's another Blade Runner movie and I want to go back into this world so I'll probably watch that movie again at some point anyways thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time for my next movie reaction